What's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out the channel. This channel is Ham Radio Dude, and today we're gonna take a look at how we can get APRS utilizing our UVK5. I think I said that right. And it's really simple. All we're gonna need today is just a few things to include the radio, uh, Android device like an Android phone, and of course, an AIOC cable. And I did have some problems with this, so we had some fun on the live stream. Maybe at the end of the episode, you're gonna see some of the interesting stuff that happened on that live stream. But let's just jump into how do we use APRS with this radio right here? What is it that we need to do APRS with this? After all, APRS would be a good function for something that's kind of allegedly like a Swiss Army knife of radios. I haven't tested it out too much yet as it's pretty new to me. Now we have the radio itself. I went ahead and I got an external antenna because the first thing I noticed is the receive though on this radio is not the greatest. The next thing that we do need is what they call an AIOC cable. Now these are kits and I'll leave a link to the GitHub below, but you can go to jlcpcb.com and you can build one of these out or five of these out for you and your friends or your ham club. And after we have that, we need a USB-C cable. And that USB-C cable is gonna go into an Android device. Today I'm gonna be using an Android phone and we'll get all that configured in just a little bit. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna go step by step and we're gonna turn on our radio, okay? And here we go, we have our radio loading up and I'm gonna go through some of the settings that I had to change in order to get this to work. First things first, I'm on the A band. I know that because I'm selected on the A band with the little arrow to the left-hand side of the screen. And I'm set to 144.390, which is da -da -da, the APRS frequency. Uh, in my settings, by hitting M, I get into my settings menu and my squelch is set to one. If yours isn't set to one, for example, if it's set to like three or four or five, what you have to do is once squelch is selected, you're gonna go ahead and hit the M button. That brings you uh, one down in the menu. You can see the arrow here. And then you're just gonna go ahead and click down until you see one. Now, if we leave the squelch open, this will be constantly receiving and it will never have the ability to transmit APRS. So we're gonna leave it at one. That means it will break whenever here's any kind of real noise, you know, uh, even faint signals. And then after we select one, we hit the M button again, and you'll notice the arrow moves over. So there you go. As we page down here, I have my TX power set to low today. Why do I have it set to low? Because I'm testing in-house, and realistically, I guess I could probably go back to that stock antenna because I don't want to transmit out super far especially if I'm testing, sending APRS over and over and over again. And if somebody heard all that earlier, my apologies. You know, uh, so then we're gonna go here to see RC, CT, CSS, they're all off, that's fine. Uh, but then here we have wide and narrow. And initially I had this set to narrow, uh, but MI7DJT explained to me that in the European standard, or at least the UK standard, it's narrow band for APRS and allegedly it's wideband for the US standard, which I'm gonna go do reading on so I could further educate myself. But that was a fun stream that we had where we got to learn some things about this and troubleshoot together. As we continue to page down, uh, let's see here, what else was important? Vox. Initially I had my Vox set to three. Now it's a little less sensitive. You know, one, it opens up as soon as I started talking. It's a little less sensitive I have it set to three. If I wanted to set it to three and I was on something like seven, again, the same thing here. I'm just gonna page down, the arrow is there. I hit M again, it saves that setting and I can keep going on. I have ABR set to five, DTR set to off. Uh, let's see here, voice, let's just disable the voice. Not that it's necessary, but I think it's probably a good idea because when we use all of this stuff together, Anything that plays through your phone or even maybe that voice might might have the potential to retransmit. So anyway, uh, let's see, back into the menu here by hitting M and paging down. I am gonna go down to STE and I have STE selected to on, okay? Everything else here should be okay. DST on, DRSP null. Yeah, oh, everything else looks to be fine. I'm just trying to confirm that myself here. Yep, we should be good. So if we hit menu again, or excuse me, if we now hit the exit button, we're back to the main screen. And we're just gonna set this to the side for a moment. But also let's turn the volume up just in case we hear any APRS data. 
Now, this is uh, the AI OC. I've already made a video on how to essentially solder these on or essentially what this is. And so I don't need to do, do too much because if you bought this from uh, my website, I had already programmed the firmware into here, but also all the instructions are very clear on the GitHub repository, which I will post below again. So let's go ahead and plug this into here. And then what we're gonna do is uh, USB-C is gonna go into the phone. I will also leave a link below to APRS Droid. It's a free software for your Android device, whether it's your phone or maybe even a tablet. But you could also pay for the paid version and uh, help support the creator. This is the free version that I downloaded. And what I'm gonna do is once I have it in, you might see an initial setup screen that asks for your call sign and ask if you're portable or if, you, if this is a digipeter or so forth. It'll ask you just a bunch of questions. But since I've already put that all in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the hamburger icon. That's called the hamburger. And we're gonna to go to preferences. So now you can see I had already set up my call sign. I already set up that I'll be seven because this is gonna be a handheld radio probably going to be used on something like a bicycle. And then my APRS to GPath, I don't have anything set onto here. I, by default, you might have Y-1. Uh, but the main and the key thing that we want to do here is, number one, I have my volume set to almost 80%, maybe even 90%. That might come in uh, handy as information in just a few moments. But under the uh, APRS connection, under the, uh, excuse me, there we go, under the connection preferences, the connection protocol I selected is AFSK, okay? And the thing that I had to do is I disabled the high quality demodulator. I found that without the high quality demodulator selected, everything seems to be working okay, but when I would enable that, uh, I was having a couple of issues with the headers being sent and the data being sent. Uh, I might investigate that a little bit later, but so far this is working okay. I did select the audio output to music. And then finally, I had on this radio the frame rate set to 800 milliseconds or the prefix time set to 800 milliseconds. With my volume set to about 80%, the next thing I want to do is I want to turn my volume up on the UV RK, UVK5 excuse me, to about 75% and maybe a little less than that. What I did is it was actually, I think this one right here that has a very small marking on it, let's see, that I marked in pen. And then I know that I just wanna be kind of like right around there. Hi, welcome back. I took a, just a little bit of a break and I wanna stress the importance of, I guess how important this volume knob up top is on the radio and the volume knob on the phone. Also, I do wanna mention that anytime you have any audio playing from the phone, now that's gonna be prone because Vox voice activated transmitting is open. Anything is gonna repeat through the AIOC, so keep that in mind. Uh, but if I finally have these settings correct, and just to stress the importance of it, I'm gonna send my position right now, okay? And this radio received it. Very cool, okay? But now what if I just move this volume knob ever so slightly? I don't know, will it receive it still? It did. Now, I'm not gonna keep doing this because I'm sure I'm sure that there's people locally who are kind of going crazy with me sending APRS data. And, and again, I'm testing, uh, so please forgive me. That's what our hobby's about. But uh, if I were to adjust this ever so slightly or this volume wasn't completely accurate, then it would sound like it's sending the data, but it would never show anything or display anything on the FT3D. And just for functionality to make sure that this is working, I will send an APRS packet from the FT3D so we could see it on the screen here. There you go. So it's uh, through wide one, wide two, and it is sending some kind of data. So that's good. Uh, and now we know that the UVK5 does have the capability for APRS utilizing the AIOC, which is a very inexpensive project. I have these on sale on the website for the cost of what they were to get them uh, fabricated at the PCB company. I think they're sold out since then, but there should be other people selling them. And if not, you could always go to jlcpcb.com 
uh, and, uh, and build your own. So there are reasons you might want to carry one of these around. For example, a lot of people out West like to go hiking and cell phone service could be scarce out West. Heck, cell phone service could be scarce in Northern Wisconsin. And if even somebody knows where you're going and you happen to get lost, you don't have cell phone service, maybe you could beacon your APRS information a couple of times. Uh, with that though, I will say that I did have a difficult time getting it configured to work consistently or reliably on here because of those volume knobs, which we talked about, but also the receive sensitivity on this, even with the larger antenna, doesn't necessarily seem to be the greatest. I'm not putting the radio down. I'm not reviewing it. I'm just pointing out a, a initial observation. But with that, I hope that this video helped you. I hope you have an AIOC and you could try this at home. And if so, are there any tips and tricks that you can point out? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the channel, 73. Wait, what's going on? Voice mod.